morning everyone it's Christine from Happy Sleepers and I'm very excited to be here this morning um, sharing some of my top sleeping tips um, I've been in the business more than six years I've worked with more than a thousand babies successfully um, got them to um, either just have one feed overnight or none um, and most most of them um, are sleeping through the night um, and that's long term um, so I decided to um, make a list of my top seven sleeping tips which will help your baby or help you to improve your baby's sleep so the first six tips are there to help you to uh, get your baby to be a good sleeper okay you will definitely see improvements in your baby's sleep but the seventh tip is there to make your baby a great sleeper so if you wait until the end you will see um, what you need to do to make your baby a great sleeper and to actually get him to start sleeping through the night so if you're interested in my top seven tips um, please listen um, I also have a PDF format um, of that so if you're interested um, in having my top sleeping tips uh, please pop your email address down the bottom in the comments um, in the comments um, and I will email you my top sleeping tips so let's get started making your baby a good sleeper so my first tip is um, don't be afraid of the dark and what I mean by that is yes at night the room is dark um, because when when it's dark our bodies produces melatonin which is our natural sleepy hormone and melatonin makes us tired and that's why we as human beings sleep at night because our bodies are filled with um, melatonin and it makes us tired but melatonin gets deactivated by the sunlight so when uh, when it's daytime there's no melatonin in our bodies um, and it's harder to sleep and that's why um, especially with newborns um, but also in general babies can sleep fairly well um, overnight but during the day they actually need to use their skills um, because there's no melatonin helping them um, to go to sleep so um, if you want to start improving your baby's day naps have the room pitch black so I mean when you have your hand up you can't see your hand that's how dark I mean um, you know to have your baby's room so when obviously when you put your baby down at, at nap time there's no melatonin in your baby's body but once your baby falls asleep in that really dark room um, the, the melatonin will start being produced and the length and the quality um, of your baby's sleep will improve the other thing about the dark room is if your baby had a really short nap like 20 or 30 minutes and he opens his eyes if there's nothing to see he can't focus on something the chances that he will resettle and go back to sleep is a lot better so um, try that have your baby's room pitch black during the day um, and early morning wake-ups um, especially in summertime um, when uh, you know it's the starts the sun starts getting up around um, six o'clock um, your baby will start waking up around six o'clock because the slightest light change uh, will wake your baby up so that's my my first tip the second one is consistency consistency is extremely important with a baby because they need specific cues and you know um, you know to show them what's happening next so if you are doing with every nap you do this for the nap this today and something else in a different day and today he sleeps in his room the next day he sleeps in his cot in, in in the cot downstairs or the next day he sleeps um, in the travel cot it's just different um, every single day um, it's very confusing for your child um, it's good to have 
the same structure and routine every single day if it's possible um and um to to, to get your baby to sleep in his room um every single day um consistency is very important um uh, with babies um to to get them to start sleeping better my third tip is a proper bedtime routine because we as human beings psychologically need to prepare ourselves for sleep. We can't just work, work, work and then jump into bed and sleep. We all need sort of like a wind down time to help us to go to sleep. So like us, um, if, if you finish eating and you want to go to bed, um, you know, you put your pajamas on, you get some water, you might read a few pages um, in a book, you brush your teeth, it's wind down time. You psychologically prepare yourself for sleep. Your baby also needs a bedtime routine or a, a, a wind down time before he goes to sleep and it's usually half an hour. That's all they need. They don't need a bath at six o'clock and then it's all these steps and then you only put your baby down at seven o'clock that's too long your baby will almost get a second wing um, and then it, again it's really difficult to get your baby down so only half an hour or so if you want your baby to go down at seven you start your bedtime routine at 6 30 so we start with a bath um, usually i say have the bedtime routine in your baby's room because you want your baby to have a proper or, or a positive um, association with his bedroom. You don't want him to associate his bedroom with, okay, um, mommy is just going to dump me there for sleep. Okay, so, um, and anxiety can also build up if it's not in your baby's room. So, if you say, for example, have the bedtime routine, um, you know the the milk and the story and everything in the lounge and now you need to put your baby down for for the night now you walk your child to the bedroom it's almost like walking to jail okay anxiety builds up there's more crying involved um, it just makes it harder um, so if you have the bedtime routine in your baby's room um, you know there's milk there's a story there's a tension there's a positive association around the room and when you finish with that you literally just put your child in in the cot there's no walking and anxiety building up towards the bedtime so a bedtime routine is really good so you have the bath then you go to your baby's bedroom uh, dress him up then you give some milk um, a story sleeping bag and then straight into the cot that's it plain and simple don't have play time in the room there's no screen time in the room um, it's just plain and simple okay so that's my third tip the fourth tip is a wait time and a wait time is very important because and that goes along with with the naps um, when your baby is overtired they work themselves up instead of down and then it gets really difficult to put your baby down so to have your baby down at a really good you know you have the timing right it will just make it a lot easier to put your baby down so in my pdf i have a list um you know the different ages um how much um awake time your baby needs and some parents will be surprised um, how little awake time they actually need like a newborn they only need literally 45 minutes to one hour of awake time so if your baby has been awake for one hour you put your baby down for the nap if he sleeps for two hours when he gets up only one hour of awake time then you need to put your baby down again for the next nap um, and you will see that they will go down a lot easier because they are not overtired awake times are very important okay so that's the fourth one the fifth one is my one two three um system and what i mean by that is is when your baby wakes up from a nap or even overnight we we all wake up a few times overnight we we don't just sleep we wake up a few times we wake up we need to resettle and go back to sleep okay but 
we don't remember waking up overnight because we just reset and go back to sleep because we have proper sleep skills but babies are not necessarily that confident in in and and, and practice to reset and go back to sleep so they might wake up and cry so when they cry when they wake up i always when i work with my clients i always say wait 10 minutes of crying before you go in there so just give your baby a little bit of time to try and resettle himself rather than you just jumping in there and constantly helping your child to go to sleep because he needs to learn at some point to be able to resettle and go back to sleep independently because that's what you want um you don't want to get up multiple times overnight with your child because he's unable to resettle and go back to sleep independently so 10 minutes of crying and then you go in and check and see what's going on but a lot of parents find it really difficult um to just wait 10 minutes and this is where the one two three system comes in on the first day if you can only wait one minute great wait one minute of crying go in the next day, wait two minutes. The third day, wait three minutes. So that's how you sort of, you know, get yourself a bit more comfortable with the crying, um, if you want to call it that way. Um, and, and you just get your baby gradually to start learning how to reset or go back to sleep, or at, at least to try. Okay, but 10 minutes, um, I've had so many babies where they cry for literally nine and a half minutes and then they go back to sleep so if you feel strong and you really want to improve your baby's sleep just go straight to 10 minutes but um, if you're a bit more emotional um, and tired um, work yourself up uh, to 10 minutes so that's the the fifth tip um, my sixth tip is um, put your baby down awake fully awake um, and this is where a lot of parents struggle. They try to rock their babies to sleep or pat their babies to sleep in their arms and then they want to put their babies down um, asleep. Um, the problem with that is that we as human beings are not meant to move while we are asleep. As soon as we start moving, our brain thinks, hang on, why is my sleeping body moving? And it thinks the body is in danger and it brings the baby out of sleep instead of deeper into sleep and I, I'm sure many of you have seen this where your baby is fast asleep in your arms you move him and you put him in a cot and as soon as he touches the cot awake it's not because of the mattress or you move him too quickly or whatever it's because you actually move him okay or they wake up within 30 to 45 minutes okay it's purely because you moved in okay so if you want to improve your baby's sleep and try to get them to start sleeping longer or just stay asleep he needs to go into the cot fully awake and then he needs to fall asleep and this is where um, a lot of parents struggle because it goes along with crying where if you actually teach your baby how to sleep independently like in fall asleep independently that crying is going to go away and a lot of well, most of my clients you put them down in the cot and they literally just winge a little bit or they maybe cry for two or three minutes and then they go back to sleep themselves and that's when you see that they will sleep for two or three hours um per nap so that's a very important one try to put your baby down fully awake so those ones are my tips to get your baby to be a good sleeper okay if you want your baby to be an awesome sleeper the next tip you have to do and i think this is where most of you are going to struggle and this is sleep associations when babies are struggling to go to sleep and f stay asleep and they keep on waking up overnight and it's because of sleep associations sleep associations are things like rocking to sleep patting to sleep uh, feeding to sleep dummies your baby needs an external strategy to help him to go to sleep so if your baby 
needs to feed to sleep at bedtime and it wakes up after how long? Two hours or 45 minutes. It's going to need the feeding again to go to sleep. And that's going to happen all the time because your baby doesn't have an internalized skill to sleep. So if you can teach your baby how to fall asleep independently at bedtime, your baby will start sleeping through the night in no time. Okay? So you have to remove all the external strategies, and I mean rocking to sleep, patting to sleep, dummies. Um, there are babies who sleeps well with dummies and that's great. I'm talking when a baby is struggling to sleep, okay? Um, Co-sleeping. That baby needs the parent's closeness in order to go to sleep. So that child is going to keep wanting to come to your bedroom or in your bed because he wants your closeness in order to go to sleep. Um, I've had parent, babies where they literally need to hold onto a parent's finger, they want to rub the hair. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever your child needs um, to, to help him to go to sleep, something that you need to do with him, you need to remove that and teach your baby how to fall asleep independently. Okay? And especially with dummies, that's a very tricky one. Um, if you when you when you want to remove the dummy the problem is then you there's a lot of crying and then you start patting the baby you remove the dummy but now you start patting the baby it doesn't help then you might as well just keep the dummy because now you replace one sleep association with another sleep association association it doesn't help at all if you want to start sleep training your child properly you need to do it properly you can't just do it halfway you're just gonna um, allow your baby to start crying unnecessarily okay so those are my top seven sleeping tips try that i promise you you will definitely start seeing improvements and if you want my pdf um, if you want me to email you my pdf please pop your your email address in the comments list and i will email uh, that to you um i'm christine from happy sleepers i've been a sleep consultant for more than seven years and i've worked with more than a thousand babies in the past successfully my success rate is 99 percent especially in the last year um, i've worked with a lot of babies especially in COVID. Um, if you want me to help you with your baby's sleep, please contact me. Go to my website www.happysleepers.com.au. Um, you will see there's a um, contact form or evaluation form. Just complete the form. I will contact you and then we can discuss your baby's sleep issues um, and we can see how and if I actually can help you. Thank you for your time. I'll talk to you tomorrow.